Amen. And here's, here's the part that, that what God does. He says, verses 16 and 17, he says, uh, uh, and then verse, in, in verse 16 and 17, he says, incurable diseases. Okay? Verse 17 says, I will set my face against you, and you shall be defeated by your enemies. Those who hate you shall reign over you, and you shall flee when no one pursues you. You're going to be nervous all over the place. Somebody, you. <laughs> you, you nervous? People jumping around? They after me. And nobody chasing me. You hear a noise? Oh, what was that? And, and again, this is a historical aspect, but this was true in the nation of Israel. As we will find out soon. He's given them a, a, a formula for being safe. That's why he gives his input principle. He's given them this formula for being safe. And we, it, it, applies, it applies to us as well. If you want to be safe, you've got to trust in the Lord. Well, what is, what is, what is the scripture that, that, that we can look at? Well, let's go to Romans chapter 8 real quick. Let's go to Romans chapter 8. There's a scripture that we can look at that coincides with what I'm talking about. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just go there real quick. Romans chapter 8. Okay? And let's start at uh, verse uh, 35. All right? What does it say here? It says, uh, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Now, wasn't what we just did? Didn't we just read about all that? Yes. Amen. Okay. And he says, as it is written, for your sakes we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet, in all these things, all those peril, all the sword, all the nakedness, all the trouble that's coming our way. Amen. What are we? We are more. Look at your neighbor. Say, I'm more than a conqueror. More than a conqueror. Than a conqueror. Yeah. Through Christ who loved us. God says in his word that I will protect you. Matter of fact, five of you would chase a hundred. But because you're not listening to me, you're going to be so nervous that you're going to hear a, a, a cricket out there and say, and move around. And a little cricket going to make you move around. You hear a little noise? You think somebody jumping through your roof? You sleep with one eye open? Or you probably pay some more because you can't get no sleep at all? Why? Because you don't trust God. And this, and this is something that he allowed to be instilled into you, that fear. But he says, I will gird you up. I will strengthen you. If you bless me, if you trust me, if you follow my statutes and follow my laws. Why? Because I'm not only a God of power, but I am a God of what? Empowerment. That's what we can say. That, and we know that all things work to good, for the good to them who love the Lord. To them who are the cause according to his purpose. Doesn't matter what situation you're going to, because God is going to work it out for good. Amen. 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 So back to our uh, chapter 26, verse 16 and 17 speaks about incurable diseases, fever leading to blindness and depression. Enemies will consume the crops. Enemies will destroy the people. And it seems rather depressing that from verse 13 to 39, God focuses on telling the Israelites of what will become of them if they are disobedient. And he continues to add more examples. So let's go down to, uh, we'll read verse 19. He said, I will break the pride of your power no more power you have. The nation of Israel is strong at this time. They're, they're starting to become strong. And he's telling them what he's going to do for them. He's telling them that he's going to bless them. I'm giving you a land that flows with milk and honey. I'm giving you a land that has been promised to you and your fathers. And he's preparing them to go into that land. Mm. Verse 20 says, And your strength shall present be spent in vain. These are the buts now because they've been disobedient. If they be disobedient. He says, and your strength shall be spent in vain. Anything you do ain't going to prosper. Mm -hmm. If you don't follow me. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we try to work, work, work. Don't come to church on Sunday because we're working overtime. Mm -hmm. 
we, we, we walk away from the Bible or studying God's word because we got to work and we put other things before God. And you know what? You can work 80 hours a week and still owe everybody. Amen. You, 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 you spend so much time doing other things when all whole lot of your family is crumbling. But yet you say, I praise the Lord, love the Lord. But here you got to give God his due. Amen. Trust in God. Amen. Young people, they go in and say, well, I want to get a good grade. Well, you got to study. Bless the Lord. Mm. And he'll give you that little boost when you're falling asleep. He'll, he'll encourage you with, with the burden that's trying to do right when you pray to him. And you shall prosper. So it works for all of us. This is for all of us. Okay? Verse 21, it says, Then if you walk contrary to me, okay? Verse 21, If you walk contrary to opposite of me, and are not willing to obey me, I will bring on you seven times more plagues according to your sin. I'm going to even make it worse than the sin that you're doing. Now understand this, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. The reaping, understand it now, the reaping of, your, of, of what you've sown, whether it's good or bad, is always greater than the sowing in and of itself. You plant a seed, whether negative or bad, the reaping is always greater than the sowing. What am I talking about? You plant one tomato seed. And you got a ton of tomatoes coming from that one seed. That if you let the vine grow, it's just gonna keep running, that one vine. And each vine, each tomato is filled with seeds. There are certain plants that grow like pumpkin plants. You grow one pumpkin plant before you know it, and it took over the whole garden. Because it grows in every direction. The sowing is not as great as the reaping. So that's something you need to think about when you're doing something. Think about the Lord. If you want to be a blessing to God, then your blessing is going to be much greater than your reaping. He said, I will also send wild beasts among you, which shall rob you of your children, destroy your livestock, and make you few in number, and your highway shall be desolate. You're wiping you out. And then he says here, but if these things you are not reformed by me, but if by these things, if God is doing all this stuff and allowing all this stuff to happen in your life, and you still don't change, this is what he's saying. He says, and if by these things, in verse 23, you are not reformed by me, but walk contrary to me, verse 24, then I will walk contrary to you, and I will punish you even seven times for your sins. Amen. Give me greater. Amen. Now I'm giving you a hint. I'm telling you what you should do. And even when things happen in your life, you still ain't trying to change. Amen. Why? Because the person said, well, they want to blame God for what's going on in their life instead of saying, Lord, I hear what you're saying. I need to stop. I need to stop. But what we do, Lord, let this, Lord, boy, you know, some people say, ain't no God up there. He let this happen to me. And, and, and don't want to change as a result of what God is doing. Even Jesus Christ said, if you don't believe of, of, of what I'm saying, you just believe it for the miracle's sake. Even the works I've done now ought to be enough to prove to you that I am who I am. Amen. So now here, he says here, now in verse 29, you shall eat the flesh of your sons and you shall eat the flesh of your daughters. Wow. Wow. Now, one thing you must understand also is, let me explain something to you about siege warfare. Whenever, and even to this day, when a, a land want to take over another land, but back in those early days, in the time of the Israelites and and, and a thousand years when Rome would take over uh, places, when the Greek would, Greece would take over places, when other invading armies would take over another land. This is what they did. They did a, used a process called siege warfare. What siege warfare is this, and that's why a lot of those cities, this is what the nation of Israel did when they took over Jericho. They marched around the city, and they took, they, they took over the land. They took the land under siege. And although Jericho was taken over in seven days or so, what happened here is some lands take a little longer than that. Well, you know when they got the walls built up around each city? Those walls are for reasons to keep the invaders out. And what happens is the invaders that come into the land 
will eat up the food around the, the, the walls on the outside. They'll drink up the water. They'll contaminate the water around the outside. They'll eat up anything that's around here and contaminate anything so that the people that's inside the city can starve to death. Mm. And they would either come out and surrender or they'll be too weak to fight. Mm. And what truly happened during siege warfare when the nation of Israel was taken over, they ate their own kids. Mm. And that's because of their disobedience. Mm. Wow. They ate their own children. These are some of the byproducts of siege warfare. Right. That's why a lot of these cities would try to store up for themselves a lot of uh, supplies and everything. And a war that with the siege will last for years. Okay? So, so again, that's, a, that's because of their disobedience. Now, he says, I will destroy your high places and cut down your incense and altars and cast your carcasses on the lifeless forms of your idols. He says, I'm going to come and take over them idols. A lot of people, they, they got their idols on their cars, on the ornaments of their cars. Their idols are their jobs. Their idols are their families. Their idols are their house. Yes, that's right. This is where their idols are. And then God said, I'll cut those down from you. Yeah. Yo, high places, if anything that comes before God is an idol, you must understand that. If you place anything before God, it is an idol. Yeah. Right. I'm going to help you out with that. So that every time you come up, you ask yourself, am I giving God more? Or am I giving this thing more due to God? That's the truth. Why? Because the heart is an idol factor. Before you know it, you don't, you know, people will put more trust in a basketball player that they never seen before. Football player that ain't, ain't thinking about them nowhere. A movie star, actress, don't care about them. All Oprah gotta do is tell you how to go buy some shoes and y'all broke and y'all go buy them shoes out. Buy this new dress or buy this new car because so and so is driving it. And then y'all go broke because you're trying to do what somebody else told you to do. And then you wonder why you're not being blessed by God. God said, I'm going to take that away from you. You're going to use it wrong. Amen? All right. So then he says here, uh, verse 32. He says, I will bring the land, I will bring the land to a desolation. And your enemies who dwell in it shall be astonished at it. I will scatter you among the nations and draw a, a, word, a, a sword after you. Now, again, this is something that we must understand. The nation of Israel was disobedient to God. They were good up until Joshua's time. So now God has also repeated this. We in Leviticus now, but if you read Genesis 28, uh, uh, Deuteronomy 28 through 30, he sort of re reminds us in this. Now one thing you must understand with how God deals with us. This is a precursor and undercurrent to God's sin cycle. Did y'all know God had a sin cycle? What this means is, you're disobedient to God, God chastises you. As a result of the chastisement, we repent. When we repent, God gives us peace again. And this was made prevalent uh, uh, well known in the, in the book of Judges because that's when they became the, when all the judges raised up and delivered the nation of Israel out of the land, out of the hands of the enemies mm -hmm. and they had their judges and the judges because they didn't have a king after Joshua they were, after a while the nation of Israel was taken over and occupied by other lands right. invading armies and as a result of that because of disobedience invading forces came in when invading forces came in they were under bondage God raised up a judge. The nation of Israel repented and God delivered them through the, the judge. Go to Judges chapter 3 and 7. Chapter 3, Judges. Judges. Joshua and Rabbi Joshua, of course, right there. Chapter 3. Okay? Okay. We'll start at verse 8.
All right. We all have it. It says, therefore, the anger of the Lord was hot, was strong against Israel, and he sold them into the land of the Kishamathanthim, king of Mesopotamia. And the children of Israel served uh, Kishamathanthim for eight years. When the children of Israel cried out to the Lord, there's time when we do wrong, we got to cry out to God. And he hears us. So I don't care what you're doing wrong, brothers and sisters. If you don't know the Lord right now, cry out to God. He'll hear you. Amen. So when the children cried out to the Lord, he raised up a deliverer for the children of Israel, who delivered them, Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother. The spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he judged Israel, and went out to war, and the Lord delivered Kishan with Anthony, the king of Mesopotamia, into his hand, and prevailed over Kishan with Anthony, so that the land had rest for what? Forty years. Then Othniel died, so the son of Kenaz died. And as a result of that, when they didn't have anybody else around, they did the same, went back to the same old thing again. They went back to the same, and then thus went the process over and over and over again. So even when God blesses you, don't think that it's over to give him the glory. When God gives you a blessing, and you're following God, don't think that you made it. Don't think you're straight. But God is good, good all the time. And then when you, you think you made it, don't think you got to serve God anymore. You don't think you got to give him the glory anymore. You don't think you got to bless his name anymore. You don't you, you, you slow up on Bible class. You slow up on coming to church. You start putting everything else before God again until he hits you again. And then you got to cry out to God and say, Lord, forgive me. And then when he does that, he gives you some peace. Because you've repented. He deals with us that same way. 